Hey guys, so today I am going to show you how to make these really yummy, soft and gooey cinnamon rolls. All right, they're not like super, what's the word, um, bready or firm or, you know what I mean? They're soft and delicious, so yeah. I also made a caramel sauce, which there is already a recipe for this. I just made half the recipe. It's on the pumpkin cheesecake video, okay? All right, so after taking a bite, let's get started on this video. So what you're going to need is four cups of all-purpose flour and an extra half cup to a cup of flour for later, okay? And you'll see why. But to start the recipe, all you need is four cups of all-purpose flour, a half cup of white sugar, a teaspoon of fine table salt, okay, and one packet of fast rice yeast, okay, or quick rice yeast. Um, I just wanted you, you to know that there's two types of yeast that you can get. You can get the active and the fast rice or quick rice. Usually fast active or fast rise and quick rise you can mix directly into your dry ingredients and active you would have to activate it with a warm liquid. So the liquid that would be used for your dough is what you would activate it in and then put in your dry ingredients. So pretty much using the fast rising, you know, save you about 10 minutes because you have to wait 10 minutes, okay? So here I'm adding in very warm milk, milk, not milk, milk, one third cup of vegetable oil or butter, unsalted butter, Two medium-sized eggs, you have to mix these up and then just add it into the middle. I'm sorry if my voiceovers aren't as great as they used to be. You know, I'm getting, now getting back into this. But um, let me repeat the ingredients. One cup of very warm milk, not hot, not boiling hot, very warm milk. You don't want it to be hot or else it will kill the yeast. Okay, one third cup vegetable oil or butter and two medium-sized eggs. And you mix this together in the, you know, the little center that you made there and then you're going to use your fork and bring it all together okay this is going to form a sticky dough and it's going to look like it's you know hard to work with and i'll show you how you're going to work with this very sticky dough this is the dough that is going to give you a nice fluffy soft cinnamon roll instead of one that's super dense and bready you know it's going to be huge they're going to be nice and thick and fluffy but they're not going to have that dense heavy uh feeling to them okay so this is how the dough looks okay and this is just using a fork no machine needed you can even use a wood spoon you can even use a spoon but the fork does the good job so this is where we're using that extra cup of flour we're going to heavily heavily hopefully i'm saying that right heavily <laughs> flour our working surface i'm just using a cutting board on my countertop because it's just a habit that i have to always use a cutting board on the countertop i do use my countertop to make you know pastries and things like that sometimes but just use a cutting board or make sure your countertop is very clean before applying your flour and your dough okay and make sure you wash your hands so as you guys can see it took everything out of the bowl and now we're going to you can either use your hands or you can use a spatula so you're going to bring the dough together with the dry flour this is going to keep your fingers from sticking to the dough but if you can't handle it just use a spatula or this is like a like a frosting scraper situation but you can use like a flat spatula to bring the dough together like this sorry the camera was shaking the baby was shaking it she's usually in the kitchen when i'm doing things and she's two so she thinks she's helping by shaking the camera so yay for special effects <laughs> All right, so I'm bringing the dough together, and as I'm bringing it together, I'm adding a little bit of flour at a time to help keep it from sticking to the board. So as you guys can see, I'm folding it in with that um, scraper or pastry wand or pastry spatula, whatever you want to call it, and this is how it's going to look once you bring it together. It should only take about five to seven minutes to get this together, okay? Once you have it together and it's not as sticky, it's still going to be a little sticky, but not as sticky, you're going to spray the bowl with a little bit of cooking spray. Um, I use the olive oil cooking spray, or you can use a little bit of oil in there 
to keep it from sticking to the sides of the bowl, okay? So here you guys see me spray inside of the bowl. It's not super clean, but once the dough proofs for one hour, you let it proof. If you don't have that much time, 45 minutes is okay too. Make sure it is in a warm place. Put your dough in the bowl, okay, that you sprayed or use a little bit of oil in. It still will be sticky. That is fine. That's normal. Cover it and put it in a warm place to proof for about 45 minutes to an hour, okay? Now we're going to get our brown sugar together. This is basically our filling for the cinnamon roll. You're going to use one cup, one pack cup of brown sugar. I just used two um, half cups. I couldn't find my one cup. Um, a half teaspoon of nutmeg and two and a half teaspoons to three teaspoons of cinnamon. Um, I like to use Saigon cinnamon. Um, you can use whatever cinnamon you have available, okay? And you're just going to mix this in as much as you can with the brown sugar. You can even use dark brown sugar if you like. It's completely up to you and what you have available. If you want to use white sugar, you can use that. It just won't have that strong, caramely flavor that brown sugar has. So these things you're going to be doing while your dough is proofing, okay? So you already made your cinnamon sugar filling for your cinnamon rolls, and you're going to use about two tablespoons, maybe three tablespoons, depending on how much cream cheese you like, and two tablespoons of unsalted butter, okay, for the frosting. And make sure the cream cheese and the butter is both at room temperature because you're going to need to mix this into your frosting. I'm adding two cups of confectioner sugar, and they're a little bit over full, so a little bit more than two cups. So, you know, I just kind of dip it in, and whatever's in the cup is going in the bowl, okay? It doesn't have to be 100% precise. I'm adding in one teaspoon of almond extract or flavoring, and I'm adding in a half teaspoon of a vanilla extract. And this gives the frosting this really unique flavor that I personally love, instead of just adding um, vanilla extract. And for just a tiny bit of that saltiness, you're going to add in um, about a dash of salt or one eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And you're going to add in two tablespoons of milk and one tablespoon of half and half or heavy whipping cream. And you're just going to use your fork and mix this all in together. And again, not using any special tools. You know, I don't want to hear it. I can't do it. I don't have this. You can do it. Okay, you guys, you don't need any special tools really for baking. They didn't have any of these special machines and all of this, you know, hundreds of years ago. And people still baked, still made pastries, still made frosting and all of that good stuff, okay? The machines and, and the tools just make life easier, yes. But if you don't have it, you can use a fork and you can use those two things that you have that are holding the phone or using your computer, which are your hands. Just make sure they're washed, okay? So I'm going to mix this as much as I can and this will form a thick frosting okay it won't be like super thick it shouldn't form peaks then it's too thick but if you want it that thick you can add a little bit more cream cheese to it but it should be about this consistency right here almost like a batter okay like a pancake batter consistency almost so here's my pan I'm going to spray my olive oil cooking spray in here I get this from um, Aldi's and I'm going to add in my parchment paper you know, just to make cleanup a little bit easier and transferring the cinnamon rolls a bit easier for me as well. Now time has passed. One hour has passed. We're going to take our dough out of the bowl and I'm going to heavily flour my working surface again. So this is the same extra one cup I'm talking about. So this is the flour that's left. It's about a half cup that was left from when I first floured the working surface. Okay. So just so you remember, Yes, it's five cups of flour, but one cup to actually flour your working area, okay? So you see how clean the bowl got? Got everything out of there so nothing is really wasted. And now you're going to fold that in just a bit. I know this seems like a lot of work, but the proofing time is what I use to make the filling and the frosting. So this really just takes about maybe an hour and a half, okay, if you include the baking part. All right, so it really doesn't take that long. So now once we folded it in again, um, you guys could see it's much easier to handle. 
you're just going to lightly fold it in, put it to the side, and add your flour. Remember, we need to keep our working area full of flour to keep this dough from sticking onto the area, okay? We still want the dough to be nice and soft, but we don't want it to, like, stick to the surface, okay? So the flour just helps you work with the dough. Once you have your dough together, make like a rectangular shape and use your rolling pin. I use my cutting board as a guide. My cutting board is 18 inches by, I believe, 13 or 14 inches. And I use that as a guide for rolling out my dough to the desired shape that I want. And this makes about... Hmm. It depends on how thick you cut the cinnamon rolls. It could make, you know, like nine huge rolls or it can make 12 like normal size rolls okay so it's about i want to say about a half inch in thickness when once it's rolled out okay and i try to get it all the way to the edges of the cutting board again i'm using the cutting board as my guide and the baby is wearing her father's shoes so that's what you're hearing in the background um you know, it is what it is. This is life with a two-year-old. It's not always going to be quiet. So if you are a parent, you will understand. If you're not, you may click dislike and complain. Doesn't really bother me. You still watched. <laughs> Anyways, um, I do hope that you are learning something from the video. And I also hope that you are seeing that it is very easy to do this at home and you don't need any special tools. If you don't have a rolling pin, I'm pretty sure you got a wine bottle or something that's round the shape of a rolling pin that you can use. Okay, so improvise. If you don't have any tools, you can use a wine bottle. You can use any round bottle. You can even probably use a really tall glass okay and roll your dough out it might take a little bit longer but it'll work okay now we're going to smear on about a tablespoon of butter um, I'm using unsalted butter if you want to use salted butter you can but the recipe already has enough salt in it so I'm just using unsalted butter and smearing this onto the rolled out dough and again my cutting board is 18 inches by 13 or 14 inches okay so that's the length and width and I'm also going to add about a tablespoon of heavy cream if you don't have heavy cream you can just use a bit of milk or a bit of half and half and you're just gonna smear that on top of the butter as well this is gonna make sure that your cinnamon rolls are ooey gooey and soft and not heavy and dense okay the dough is the way it is because we want a nice fluffy soft you know cinnamon roll unless you want like heavy dense cinnamon rolls this may not be it for you okay anyways once you have your cream milk or half and half on there you're gonna put um, your cinnamon sugar mixture onto your rolled out dough and it's okay if there's a couple of lumps of sugar in there it's fine it's going to melt all right just spread it out all the way to the edge is close as you can without spilling sugar if any spills it's fine we're gonna use it to top the cinnamon rolls once we cut them by the way if you have not realized this is not a recipe for someone who is on a sugar-free low calorie diet of any kind okay this is these are not to be eaten all throughout the day but if you want to do that that's your choice it's your life do what whatever you like these are just really, really good treats that you can make for yourself, for your kids, for your family, for your spouse, you know, to surprise them, you know. And they freeze really well, by the way. They freeze really well, cooked or uncooked. And if you want to cook them, what you do is take them out, let them thaw out, come down to room temperature, and then you can bake them, okay? So just so you know, make sure you use some parchment paper too in between the rolls so they don't like stick on to, you know, whatever they're in. Or you can like already put them in the pan with parchment paper, let them thaw out in the pan, and then just pop it in the oven, okay? So you can use a knife if you want to, but I'm using the string off of this cheap uh, cake cutter that I got from the dollar store. It's like a metal string and, you know, I can reuse it a few times before, you know, it's not good anymore and I've used it a few times. So what I do is kind of make like a, a guide with it. I kind of push it down to see how many cinnamon rolls I'll be able to get out of this. Um, sometimes they come out a little too thin, so I'll just make them a little thicker than what I originally um you know planned out on the roll itself so here's how I do it I slide it under the roll and go across pull and cut so here's a close-up of how that looks I just pull it the opposite way 
and it cuts it perfectly. If you don't have string, you can use uh, dental floss that's unflavored, okay, with, without flavorings or smells or anything like that, or you can use a knife that works fine too, okay? So we're gonna cut these and put them in the pan that I lined with parchment paper. I sprayed it before and then lined it with parchment paper. All right, you guys. This is actually a very fun part of cinnamon roll making besides adding the frosting. This is, this is letting you know you're almost there. You're almost there, okay? <laughs> and if you haven't preheated your oven, you can do that right now because you're going to have to let these cinnamon rolls proof in here for about another 10-15 minutes and that's about this, the amount of time it takes for your oven to warm up. Anyways, so include that into the one hour and 30 minutes. All right, you guys. So while you're doing this, let your oven um, heat up and that's going to be the time that it takes for this to proof for another 10 to 15 minutes. And here is the leftover sugar that fell out of the rolls. You're just going to sprinkle this on top. If you don't have any that, that fell out of the rolls, just make a very small batch of cinnamon sugar, again, just a tiny batch, and sprinkle it on top. I feel as though it gives it a really, really good extra, my mouth is watering a little bit, <laughs> an extra ooey gooey, you know, flavor to that, all right? Um, while my oven was preheating, I decided to make some caramel sauce. This is half the recipe from my caramel sauce from my pumpkin cheesecake video which I will have down below in the description box. My husband wanted me to make caramel sauce with the walnuts to go on top of the cinnamon rolls. So if you want that recipe for the caramel sauce, it's in the description box. But you'll have to watch the video or skip through it to, you know, see how to make it. And it's also in the description box of that video. Alright you guys, so it's been about 10 to 15 minutes and as you can see the cinnamon rolls kind of puffed up again. So now we can put them in the oven and you will bake them for about 10 to 12 minutes on 350 degrees Fahrenheit and then take them out. Alright, so here they go right into the oven, 10 to 12 minutes on 350. And then once they're done, like magic, like TV almost, this is after 10 to 15, not 10 to 12 minutes, I mean, 10 to 12 minutes, <laughs> we're going to add um, about a tablespoon or a teaspoon of milk or half and half or heavy cream on top of the cinnamon rolls. Look, don't, don't judge me crazy, okay? Just, well, you can, I don't care. <laughs> You're going to enjoy these cinnamon rolls, that I do promise you, okay? So once you have the milk, heavy cream, or half and half, any of those will work fine. Bake for another 15 minutes. So remember, bake for the first time 10 to 12 minutes on 350. Take them out, put about a teaspoon of milk or half and half or heavy cream on each roll and then bake for an additional 15 minutes. Okay, and this is how they'll look once they are done. Now you can go ahead and put on that delicious frosting that we made with the cream cheese, okay? My mouth is watering while doing this voiceover, so you can kind of, let me get it together. <laughs> put a huge dollop of frosting on each cinnamon roll, and it will pretty much naturally melt all over on its own, but I like to help it a little bit and spread it out just a tad bit, all right? And I like, I, I love eating fresh cinnamon rolls like right out of the oven. They taste so delicious, like heaven. If heaven had a taste, this would be it. <laughs> All right. So hopefully this video encourages you to try this recipe out. You know, seeing that I didn't use any fancy tools, hopefully it did. And, you know, you get great results with just using a fork, a spatula, and a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, they sell them at the dollar store, or you can use a wine bottle or any kind of bottle. Okay, so this is the end result after the frosting, and then I'm going to add the caramel sauce that I made. Um, again, the link is in the description for the pumpkin cheesecake, which has the caramel sauce recipe in it. It's, you know, it's the season for pumpkin, so I'm pretty sure you're going to want to see that pumpkin cheesecake video anyways. So this is how the cinnamon roll looks, and I'm going to add, oh, Oh, <laughs> I'm going to add the caramel sauce on top of there with the walnuts and add a little bit more caramel sauce on top of that. 
you know give it a good old taste test and that is it for this video again hope you guys enjoyed it hope it encouraged you if you have any questions make sure you leave them down below in the description box I will try to write the recipe down in the description box for you but hopefully you had a pen and paper ready and wrote it down you know while I was talking but it's a super easy recipe for the most part and a super easy process to make and they do well frozen raw or cooked and yeah just bake enjoy and by the way you can watch a show while you wait for your dough to proof okay you can watch a show don't say you don't have time you have time you just gotta manage it right all right i love you guys and thank you for watching bye and bye say bye guys bye, bye.